By now, we're all familiar with the EV revolution and the adoption that's taking place around the world with electric vehicles and this transition towards a decarbonized society with clean energy at the fore. I thought today it would be a good time to revisit Magnus Energy Technologies. ASX m and are looking to develop lithium-ion batteries to help to fuel this EV revolution and they're developing a vertically integrated supply chain to help facilitate this. It's an interesting company and today this is coming off the back of a binding offtake agreement for their Natru Graphite project, which has really attracted a lot of investor interest recently in ASX m and Today we'll discuss the story, we'll explore who Magnus Energy is and the opportunity that they're trying to feed into with so much attention at the moment on the lithium ion battery supply chain. If you do enjoy this video, don't forget to hit the like button, feel free to share it out. We make daily videos each and every day as well, so if you haven't yet, make sure you've subscribed, turn your bell notifications on as well and you won't miss any of our daily episodes. So with that, who is ASX m and as mentioned, Magnus Energy are looking to develop a vertically integrated supply chain. Of course, we know that supply chains are quite broad. There are many different components within them and Magnus are looking to start all the way at the mine with their Natru Graphite project, developing out high quality spherical graphite products, going all the way through with battery technologies in which they have a part ownership in C4V. And that goes all the way through to the ultimate battery cell production. We'll talk about their different components of the supply chain that they're helping to feed into. I'd love to know your thoughts as well. So drop in a comment below what you think about Magnus Energy. What were your thoughts on today's graphite offtake agreement with Traxxas? And where do you think ASX m and heads moving into 2022? So before exploring the offtake agreement and some of the specifics surrounding that deal with Traxxas, it makes sense for us to take that step back and have a think about that Magnus Energy offering from a higher level. Where do they play? What are the different components of their offering? And how does it all feed into this broader vertically integrated supply chain? So at the start, they've got their Tanzanian Natru Graphite project. They're 100% owner of that. It's a project that's actually got high quality graphite. It's very high quality. It's a large resource as well. And so if they do have the ability to bring that online moving forward, of course, it will be a key component of their supply chain, not only for offtakes that they're able to sell on to potential customers, but it will also feed into the ultimate battery cell production that they're doing further downstream too. They then have a 10% ownership in C4V, which is a battery technologies company. They've got the exclusive US rights to C4V patents as well for battery technologies. And this is a key component because of course, having the best technologies is gonna provide them with that point of difference when ultimately selling their battery cells onto customers. And then finally, they've got their battery manufacturing facilities. They've got a 60% ownership of IM3NY, which is located in New York, and it's the closest factory to come online. They're moving towards semi-automated production and ultimately hoping to move into fully automated production into 2022. They've provided a recent battery update with that, around about 40% of the plan update process. And then IM3 Townsville as well, which they have about a third ownership. It's a little bit further down the line, but it's one that they are looking to move towards and ultimately hoping to get up to scale to 18 gigawatt hours of production if they are successful. Before we dive into the specifics as well, a reminder, I'm not a financial advisor. Nothing we discuss on the channel is financial advice. Everything we discuss is all just a general discussion. The stocks are not buy recommendations. It's just that general discussion to be a starting spot for you to go away and do your own research from. And so I guess with all of that background, it brings us to the Natru Graphite project. This was the center of attention today. Magnus signed a binding offtake agreement with Traxxas, who are a commodities trader and merchant. It's actually quite a significant agreement, but if we have a little bit of a look back now with the Natru Graphite project, they've completed a bankable feasibility study previously, and it's for over 200,000 tons per annum of throughput. It's a graphite concentrate that will be produced for an initial reserve back 15 year mine life. We can see that they've got a significant amount of jumbo and super jumbo sized flakes, which is atypical often for many of the other distributions for the premium markets. What's interesting as well with the Natru Graphite Project's high quality resource, it ends up producing a high quality graphite that doesn't need any further downstream purification or chemical leaching, which of course saves on the cost per tonne. And it also means it's more efficient to get out to the customers. We can then have that bit of context to understand the agreement today. So Traxxas, as that leading international physical commodities trader and merchant, they're a big global player. This agreement was for a six year period, initial 50,000 tons per annum for the first year, then 110,000 tons per annum for the five years consequently after that. Ends up being around about 600,000 tons of natural graphite covering all flake sizes. Of course, with the previously completed BFS, that was for over 200,000 TPA. So this ends up being around about 
half of the total throughput. It'll be fascinating to see if there are any other further offtakes that come to market over the next period, as well as, of course, understanding that the product that will eventually be produced will also help to feed into the battery manufacturing facilities if they come online too for Magnus's Energy's vertically integrated supply chain. I think what's critical about this agreement here as well is that the pricing of the graphite concentrate will be on a market pricing basis, which of course allows Magnus to really feed into the potential upside if graphite prices continue to grow moving forward. We know that graphite demand is forecast to increase quite significantly over this next decade. As lithium ion batteries continue to grow in demand, there is likely to see an increased demand and a supply shortfall moving forward. So of course, if this happens and there's a natural rise in prices for that graphite, then this market pricing mechanic allows ASX m &S to really be a beneficiary of that. And so just having a look at some of the specifics for this binding graphite offtake with Traxxas. First and foremost, it's a binding offtake, which of course is a big tick. As mentioned, there's a bit of a ramp up and a scale up period as they bring production online. 50,000 tonnes of product initially for the first 12 months, and then ramping up to that 110,000 tonnes for the five years subsequently from that pricing at market price. But I do think it's important to note, however, that there are a few condition precedents for this to actually be enacted. We can see here, there's four of them. They come into action at the back end of Q3 2022. Each of these need to have been completed successfully for the offtake agreement to actually have the condition satisfied. First and foremost, Magnus have to deliver an updated bankable feasibility study in relation to Natri Graphite project. Obviously, the lay of the land and the market dynamics have evolved and changed since the initial BFS. So this is something that investors did want to see originally as well. But I think it's worth noting that BFS has been completed, so it will just be tweaks and refinements versus having to commence and restart that all the way from the beginning. Of course, probably the most important one, which is going to be that Magnus need to secure, finalize and enter into project financing for Nitro Graphite project before the end of Q3 2022. Financing is the most important part about bringing projects online. So this is one that investors are gonna be watching keenly over this period. Receipt of all approvals from and agreements with the Tanzanian Ministry of Minerals. They've got the majority of their approvals in place already, but of course this is an important tick that needs to go through. And then the construction of the plant to commence prior to this period too. So Magnus have around about nine months to get all of their building blocks in place for this offtake to really come to life. So it's going to be fascinating to see how it plays out. I think there's a few other things to take away from this binding graphite offtake. It is worth noting that there was an interesting consideration for entry where Magnus will pay Traxxas initially 700,000 fully paid ordinary shares. At the time of this recording, Magnus was trading just below that 50 cent mark. So it ends up being around about 304 to 400,000 AUD initially. And then there's additionally options as well, priced at that 60 cent mark. It's quite an interesting mechanic. It's not often that you see initial, I guess, considerations for entries as a basis for the offtake agreement. But probably the reason that it's coming to play Magnus have outlined is that they're of the opinion that the entry into this offtake agreement will assist them with securing project funding for the development of this. Of course, securing funding is not a linear path. It's not easy. There's a range of different factors that come into consideration for funding and financing partners. And most significantly, they want to see offtakes, they want to see deals, and they want to know that this project is likely to come online. And so having a binding offtake is it's a major factor. And so Magnus believe that there's significant upside to enter into this. Of course, depending on the basket pricing, because this deal will be made at market pricing, there's cash flows from these six years, potentially up to and above that $1 billion AUD mark. And if the supply shortfall happens and graphite prices continue to rise, there's further upside to be had from that. So yes, there is an initial outlay in terms of some fees, but if this project does come online, then of course the upside over the next few years moving forward, not only from this agreement, but other potential offtakes that may come to light, does have the ability to really outscale that quite significantly. So we'll see how it all plays out. And then I did think it was probably worth us just casting our minds a little bit into the downstream end of Magnus Energy's vertically integrated supply chain as well. We know, of course, they're developing out their battery cell manufacturing. They've got technologies that they've licensed from C4V as well. It's a patented and commercialized by a mineralizing process, which adds some upside, significant upside, 15 to 20% nominal cell voltage to the popular LFP chemistry. We know that Tesla have recently been doubling in LFP chemistry. We know some battery manufacturers are looking to move away from nickel and cobalt based cathodes too. And so Magnus Energy are developing it out in LFP chemistry with upside from the technology that C4V have developed. It's going to be interesting to see how this plays out and to see the demand from this. It's worth noting as well that there's a broad range of offtakes that have been signed for the downstream battery manufacturing from IM3 and Y. So of course, investors will be watching to see how this production can come online first in a semi-automated manner and then ultimately a fully automated manner over the next 12 months and beyond before the scale up really picks up pace.
And so the most recent battery factory update that ASX m and have provided was recently that they're around about 40% completion for the New York plant status. Of course, they have a 60% ownership of this. They're fully funded for the initial stage for 1.8 gigawatt hours, but they do have aspirational goals to scale this over the next decade to 30 gigawatt hours and beyond. They've got claims that they produce one of the greenest batteries in the world as per uh, external report. And what will be fascinating to see will be as they can bring this support online, we know that there's a real focus on localization of supply chains from the United States government, as well as really governments around the world. We know there's an infrastructure bill that potentially will be going through and some funding that is as well looking to be provided to companies that can bring production online in the United States and feed into that North American supply chain. And Magnus does look like a prime candidate for this further supported funding. So it'll be fascinating to see how this really does play out over this next period. And so just bringing it all back to the Magnus Energy offering and what to watch over the next 12 months and beyond. If you have enjoyed this video so far, don't forget to hit the like button. Feel free to share it out. As mentioned, we make daily videos each and every day. So if you haven't yet, make sure you've subscribed, turn your bell notifications on. You won't miss any of our daily episodes. And we'll leave links up above as well to some of the other ASX EV growth stocks and other companies within the EV battery supply chain discussions that we've had previously on the channel. So we can see here the split of Magnus Energy's offering fully funded for 1.8 gigawatt hours of production for IM3MY, looking to scale up eventually to 30 gigawatt hours and beyond. The Australian battery plant, which is hoping to be located in Townsville, it is further behind in terms of production and development compared to IM3MY, but there's aspirational goals to move towards 18 gigawatt per hour of production, which will be globally significant in terms of current production. And then of course, there's the Natri Graphite project. Offtake has been signed for now. Really the big thing to watch over this upcoming period for Natri will be that move towards financing. We know there's a significant amount of conditions to be met for Q3 2022. Nine months isn't a huge amount of time, so it will be a sprint, it will be a race, but if they can get all four of those condition precedents ticked, it really bodes pretty well for the Natri Graphite project and what it could unlock for the ASX m and offering moving forward. Magnus is in the early stages of their development. It's going to be fascinating to see how they can feed into this broader EV electric vehicle adoption around the world and really this real focus for lithium ion batteries and the EV battery material supply chain. Keen to hear your thoughts on it all, so drop in a comment below. Hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you so much for joining us. For now, stay well and happy investing.